Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here, welcome back to more Let's Play Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. A uh, few things to mention about this episode. First, as you can probably tell, this is going to be a very long episode if you look at the video time, because in this episode I'm going to be taking care of all the extra stuff we have to do, with exception to one thing, and you guys know what that one thing is, I've been putting that off for a very long time. And yeah, I didn't want to waste two update days just to get through all the extras, so I felt better just getting everything done in this video. So uh, for those of you who know this game pretty well and you just want to see specific extras I'm covering, uh, I will put everything that I'm doing in the video description so you can kind of basically get an idea of what I'm going to be doing in this episode and you can decide whether or not you want to watch. I won't be offended if you don't watch because this is a very long episode and we're not going to be really making any sort of progress in this episode either. Uh, the only reason I am doing this little first part is it will actually uh, allow me to start fresh with what I need to do in the next episode and we can get right into it because in order to progress to the next episode we do have to uh, talk to King and Queen Nimbus again because they're going to allow us to use the royal bus, as we'll find out, to uh, get to the final location where the last star piece is being held. And uh, I will go ahead and admit it right now, this episode is actually being done in post-commentary. I really, really, really wanted to make sure that it didn't be in post-commentary, but because there was a lot of switching around and I had to make a lot of cuts, the I didn't get all of the commentary, and that just made things difficult, and I didn't, I couldn't really redo anything either, so, yeah, this episode is going to be in post-commentary, unfortunately, but I'll try to make it as interesting as possible. So, uh, yeah, as we, uh, might have guessed, the last star piece is actually in Bowser's Keep, and there is no way to get to Bowser's Keep. So, King and Queen Nimbus are going to allow us to use the Royal Bus which is their mode of transportation, I guess. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing in the next episode, though. In this episode, we're not going to worry about any of that because we have a lot of stuff to do. Uh, I'm basically basically going to go across the entire world map and then revisit all the locations that still have some loose ends we can cover. And then I'll do those, and then at the end of this episode, we'll be ready to go inside Bowser's Keep. So that sounds like a plan to me. So the uh, first thing I'm going to do is, I'll go ahead and explain it right now, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to Pipe Vault and uh, show you guys how you would normally destroy the Shy Ranger enemy. Uh, the Shy Ranger, as I've explained before, is a very speedy enemy, and uh, you actually don't get the chance to kill him early on because he has a lot of HP and whenever you do outspeed him, because he normally runs at the beginning of every battle when it's his turn. But, um, basically, whenever you come into contact with him, he'll run away, and you don't really get a chance to finish him off, and I kind of want to finish him off, so that's exactly what I'm going to do first. I'm kind of exploring the map just to make sure I covered everything right here, so that's why you see me uh, go back to World 1, but we are definitely done with World 1. So now we're going to go to Pipe Vault, and I am going to make a video cut, so uh, I will cut to when I... Uh, get into the Battle of the Shy Ranger. See you then. Okay, so the method I used to destroy the Shy Ranger was, uh, first, obviously I was, had to uh, make Geno's speed get really high. I had to actually equip him with a Troopa pin or a feather. It really doesn't matter, but I prefer the Troopa pin because I think it actually does more damage that way. And then use Geno's most powerful attack, which is Geno Flash. And I also gave him the work pants, too, to give him a little extra um, magic power, which did do enough. And we killed him. He has 300 HP. Now, you don't really get anything that special. I mean, you get some extra experience points. But it's hard to tell because, obviously, we get a lot more experience points from the battles we do normally. So, that really wasn't a good indicator. But, yeah, there we go. We uh, defeated the Shy Ranger. And, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and show you my setup as well. Uh, if we go into... No, not special. If we go into, um... Equip. Yeah, I gave him the hand cannon, work pants, and the troopa pen. Again, you could also use the feather, but, um... The, uh, troopa pen does give, uh... More attack power, I think. So that's why I went with that. Although I didn't think it mattered anyway, because I think it just gives you attack power, not magic power. 
Or maybe it gives defense. I don't... Maybe it's just attack and defense. I don't remember. I can't think of it right now. Um, I, I explained what it did in the past video, so... Whatever I said back then, that's the right answer. So yeah, let's get out of here. We're done with uh, the pipe vault, and now we're going to move on to the next location, which is going to be Moleville. Now, um... When I originally did this, I was kind of unaware of the fact, so, uh... It's actually kind of a good thing that I can't explain this now the way I am. But, uh, there is actually something else you can do with the fireworks. Or not the fireworks, the shiny stone you can get from the, uh... Little Moleville girl here. So, uh... First, I have to buy some fireworks. Spend 500 coins on this, too. Which is honestly not worth it. And then you want to go to the... I think the item shop... Yes, the item shop. And talk to the little mole girl in the back. Now, she's going to ask for the shiny stone. And at this point, I was like, wait a minute. I thought she asked for the fireworks. But then I remembered that, no, she needs the shiny stone. You have to actually give her the uh, uh, the fireworks to the little girl for the shiny stone. Then give it here. So I went ahead and give, gave her my earlier shiny stone. And then I'll just get the uh, a second one right here, too. So I didn't waste anything. So I didn't really screw myself or anything. Also, there is actually a secret about the fireworks, but I'll mention that later on. Because uh, it has nothing to do with this point in the game anyway. But basically, if you buy a certain amount of fireworks, you can uh, change the ending a little bit. So yeah, if you give the girl the Carbo Cookie, which is what you exchange the shiny stone for, uh, she will actually leave to give you a frog coin. But the secret here is if you actually stand on her little bucket after she leaves, as you'll find out in just a minute, you will get a special trip down the Midas River. But we've seen this before, so I'm not going to show this. But that is basically your reward for giving her the Carbo Cookie. It's also worth mentioning that when you reach the end of this particular Midas River run, you actually get to keep your coins if you uh, read this little note over here. So uh, you do get your coins, you get to keep whatever you have, so that's nice, but it's really not worth it that much. But we are going to go back to Moleville, and uh, the thing I didn't mention the first time around when I did this was that you actually have to do this two times. And once you do it a second time, you actually get a frog coin from that girl instead of the uh, Midas River trip. Although you might get it. I don't know if you do or not. But if you talk to her again right here, she won't have any recollection of what you're talking about. So you have to do it twice before she gives you the reward that you get for giving her the Carbo Cookies. But anyway, we're going to go to Booster Tower now. When you get to this point right here, which is the room after you fight Sniffet 3 in your original venture up the tower, you can actually find Knife Guy in the uh, middle of this room. He will apologize for attacking you earlier with his brother. And if you talk to him twice, he'll actually allow you to play a little mini-game. Now you have to play this game 15 times before you get a reward that's actually worth it. Uh, I'm going to show you what you basically have to do the first few times, and then I'll cut to the final time. But yeah, you have to follow the yellow ball, which uh, it's very easy to do. Just pay attention, and you should be able to do this just fine. It's not really that hard. But yeah, your rewards for uh, passing these games is you'll get these items called Wilt Shrooms. And I believe you can also get a uh, Rotten Mushroom and... Uh, there's also another type of mushroom, we'll see it later on, but they're very weak variations of mushrooms. They don't heal very many HP, but, you know, if you get a lot of them, they can actually add up to a lot of coins when you sell them, and this is a pretty easy way to get these items, so you can do that if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and cut to the final attempt. And after doing it 15, maybe 16 times, you get a bright card. And that card is very important, because that will allow you to access uh, Great Guy's Casino, which is that area we unlocked in Bean Valley, so we're going to hold on to that. We definitely are going to hold on to that. And uh, as for items to get rid of, we'll just get rid of uh, a Will Shroom, and the Moldy Mushroom is the other one you can get. So yeah, let's skip to higher in Booster's Tower. 
back to this room. You guys remember this room. And if you actually look outside, look who's here. It's Valentina. Uh-oh. I think someone's in love. So yeah, that's what happens to Valentina after the events of Nimbus Land. Uh, one of the uh, Nimbus folk actually mentioned that Valentina flies south to a building, and this is the building they were talking about. So yeah, I always found that scene kind of interesting. But yeah, now that we've seen that, we can actually leave, and we're going to go to our next location. On the way down the tower, I got into a battle that I actually finished, and Toadstool gained a level. And she is now at level 18. Which means she actually learns her final special attack, and I believe it's her only physical... Or not physical, but her only, like, her only special attack that can actually do damage. But you get Psych Bomb, which is very powerful. I'll go over that later. I believe it's non-elemental, too. So I'm actually back in Moleville. There is one thing I forgot to do. Uh, the last item you can get from the Lucky Shop Vendor is actually available. And this one's actually a really good one. Before I can actually buy it, I have to sell a few things. Because I believe you have to have 300 coins for this upgrade. But thankfully, I haven't actually uh, gotten rid of my uh, fuzzy armors yet. So I can sell those and make room for this item which is a metal plate, and it's also Toadstool's final weapon. She does have another weapon, much like Mario, but this is arguably her best weapon, because it does the most damage. And it's a frying pan, too, so... I guess you could say that video games are keeping sexism alive, even in the 1990s. <laughs> okay, not really. But yeah, anyway, it's a cool item, and honestly, it shouldn't be sexist because it's a very powerful item, too, so... Hooray for Toadstool, gaining a powerful weapon. Anyway, our next stop on our tour of extras is going to be here at Marymore. Uh, first, this guy right here, if you talk to him while you have the Bright card, he will actually uh, bargain for it. And I believe he offers 100 coins the first time. If you refuse, he'll offer 5 frog coins, and if you refuse again, he'll offer 10 frog coins. So if you really want to give up the bright card, you can go ahead and do this, but honestly, I think you get more bang for you, your buck if you actually sell it to a normal shop. I don't know how many you get for it there, but it, it's a lot more than what this guy offers. He basically just gives you a way to get it for get some cheap and easy frog coins, but it's not worth it. And yeah, I accidentally talked to him twice, so that's why you're seeing this again. But anyway, the uh, second thing I'm going to do here at Mary Moore, and I actually kind of like... This is when I kind of realized that I had barely any coins for this, but I did find a way to actually show it off. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stay in the Mary Moore Suite. And you have to stay in the Mary Moore Suite by paying 200 coins. And you also get an item if you do that as well. But, as I said, I had a little trouble kind of uh, making the money to do this, so I actually had to sell a lot of items. And I actually ended up selling some accessories, too. I sold uh, the True Form pen, the Wake Up pen, the Antidote pen, and the Zoom shoes and Jump shoes. Uh, the reason why I sold those items was, well, first of all, for the Zoom shoes, you have a more powerful variation anyway, That because the Zoom shoes are essentially just the feather item, but weaker. And also you can buy the Zoom Shoes elsewhere, and that was the logic I used as well. Because you can buy a lot of these items, the items that I sold, and the, uh, well, the accessories I sold in the shop. So if you could buy it somewhere, I went ahead and sold it. I didn't sell anything exclusive, so do not worry about that. And I also sold my uh, mushrooms too, because mushrooms are very easy to come by, and... I honestly wouldn't have a problem finding some new ones. But yeah, that's basically what I did, and now I can stay in the Mary Moore Suite. And I'm also going to show another secret with the suite that I can actually do if I stay a second night and have no coins to pay the fee. Because you can only you're only paying for one night, and each night you stay at the hotel, you have to uh, pay a hundred extra for each additional night. 
But anyway, we're going to follow this toad up the stairs into the actual room. And he will give us a little tour. You have some uh, bathrobes, which you can't wear them, obviously, because the game wanted to be kind of lazy with that aspect. And then you can also uh, do something else. But first, we have to actually uh, get this guy out of here. So we have to give him a tip. And then he leaves, and here we are in our hotel room. And you can actually go in the bathroom, and uh, Mario will take a cozy bath or shower, I don't know which. And after he's done... He actually comes out with some uh, red on his face. Cool little visual change, but it actually goes away after you leave the room, so it's not worth it. Uh, you also have that bell right there, and if you actually uh, ring the bell, he will actually uh, allow you to buy a pick-me-up or a Caro Caro Cola. But you have to actually give him a tip for him to leave again. And I actually didn't have enough coins to uh, pay the tip. So he just ended up leaving, which I thought was kind of funny. But anyway, uh, we're going to stay the night. And because staying the night was so much fun, and we also got a uh, flower tab too, which I didn't mention earlier, and because that was so much fun, you know what? We're gonna stay another night. <laughs> and yeah, we have barely any coins, so we're not gonna be able to pay for the second night, so... Oh well. We can stay a few more nights if we want to, but I don't know if it really matters if you do or not. But anyway, we're done here, um, and we're going to go downstairs and leave, because we're done with this hotel. They can't do anything to us. Well, that's actually wrong. This guy is going to stop us from leaving. And because we don't have enough coins to pay the man, he's going to make us work at the hotel, and I love this. I love this extra scene. Like, I don't know, I just always thought this was very creative how they did this. How they actually make you work, and you can't actually leave until you repay the debt. Now, I don't know for sure. I have a feeling that it wouldn't work this way, but I think that the amount of coins you have to repay the guy, it's not dependent on how long you actually stay here. Like... I think you only have to do this, like, once, regardless of how many coins you owe. I could be wrong, because I never try to pay too much extra, because... I mean, this is fun, and it's cool, and it's awesome, and I... <laughs> I love how you can actually go into the bathroom and take a, take a bath or a shower or whatever while you're showing the room to these this other couple, which is, which is hilarious. But yeah, like, um... You might have to do this, like, a few more times if you owe more than one night's worth, but I do not know that for sure. But yeah, we're, uh, essentially done here, so we can leave, and... I always thought this was kind of weird right here, but, um... Yeah, the guests don't even stay the night. They just, like... You show them the room, they pay for it, and they just, like, leave immediately after. But yeah, uh, we're done with that, and we can finally leave Marymore. That was a lot of fun. It's hilarious. I love that scene so much. I just thought it was hilarious that, uh... <laughs> I just thought it was hilarious that, uh... Um... Mario could take a shower while they're... Sh while he's showing the room. Okay, so, uh... What else am I doing here? Um... Oh, I'm also selling a few things, because... I do actually have to uh, do something else that requires money, so I just want to make sure I have everything ready. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave, and immediately come back, because there is one more thing I wanted to show off. I meant to show this in my Mary Moore episode, but um, I forgot to. But Mario can actually perform the ceremony if you stand in front of the podium. I can't believe I didn't show that off. I normally do that all the time whenever I come here, but whatever. Uh, now we're in Seaside Town, and we're going to visit Beatles R Us. 
Which I don't want an explanation, but you have to take an explanation before you can do this. Uh, basically, this is a variation of the Booster Hill minigame. And first you have to actually uh, buy a beetle box. Which uh, is 50 coins, but I don't think I have enough to actually buy it. I'll go over this stuff later. So uh, I actually went over here and uh, sold a few more things before I actually went ahead and did this. And I believe this is where I actually started selling my accessories. I think. I don't remember. I think I looked over my items and I realized I do not want to sell anything. So I went to my accessories I was like, okay, I can buy some of these at a store. So I'll go ahead and sell some of these. So I sold definitely the... Not really the most useless, but, you know, some of the useless armors and accessories you can get. And then I came back here and then realized you have to actually pay 100 coins along with the 50 coins for the beetle box. So, uh, I still had to sell off a few more things before I could do this. So, yeah, you need 150 coins before you can even do this the first time. Which is just ridiculous. It's definitely not worth it. But it's a cool mini game, and I wanted to show it off, so... I wanted to make sure I could do that before I uh, ended this video of extras, because this is definitely something I did want to show regardless. So yeah, let's uh, finally go back over here and actually get this minigame started. That was just very, very annoying. So yeah, we bought our beetle box, we paid the initiation fee, and now we can actually play this minigame. So after you buy the beetle box, we can now go to Booster Hill, which is exactly what we're going to do. Booster Hill is back where Mary Moore was. It's where we played the uh, Toadstool Chasing game. And this game is very, very similar to that. The only difference is I think it's actually a little harder, and obviously you get some good rewards for this as well. But yeah, it's basically the same thing. You. Uh, have to chase a beetle, and you have to use the barrels and the uh, sniffets to actually uh, propel yourself forward. And you, ha you also have to jump to get the beetles, too. In the, the Toadstool game, you just had to touch Booster, who was not in the air, but because these beetles are in the air, you actually have to jump for them. And uh, as that one sign in Beetles R Us actually mentioned, there are three different types of beetles. A male, a female, and a golden beetle. Uh, females are worth only one coin, I think. It might be backwards. Uh, males are worth 50 coins. Again, it might be backwards. And the golden ones are worth one frog coin. So that is how the totals work. Um, I don't remember if the males are the big ones or those that are the females. I don't know for sure. Again, we'll figure that out when we actually reach the end of this. But yeah, it's just like the game we've already played, so I don't need to explain too much about this. It's pretty cool, though. I like I like this game. I just wish it was a little easier, and I with, wish the controls were a little um, more fluid, but very, very minor complaints. Yeah, I, I'm honestly not doing very well either. I had a little trouble getting going at first, but I did definitely get a few beetles here, so... I wouldn't say this was, like, the best run of this ever, but, you know, I did decently enough, I guess. Yeah, like, I shouldn't have missed that right there. And I shouldn't have missed that either. Yeah, the jumping is, like, so weird. Like, you think you'd be able to land on them, but then you, like, just miss them. And then it obviously hinders you and knocks you back and it just gets really annoying. Okay, so, um, come on. Come on, Mario. You can do this. We're almost done because the barrels are stopped coming down the hill, so this is definitely nearing the end. And yeah, the snippets are gone, so we are at the end now. So we go to the giant sign at the top, and we check our totals. We caught six beetles. And we caught two female, three male, and one gold, which uh, I believe was... 
103 coins with uh, one frog coin. I think that might be right. We'll find out right here. Oh, 152. Okay, I had it backwards. Like I figured I would. And we got one frog coin too. But anyway, next area. And here we are at the Great Guy Casino, the only area we haven't explored yet. And because we have a bright card, we can finally enter and we can play some casino games. Now there are three mini games we can play. The first one is a slot machine. It's just like the slot machines we saw in Bean Valley. You have to line up uh, the pictures on the chest. And if you match all three, you can get a frog coin. So that is basically how you play this. Of course, though, this is probably the... Uh, I don't know, it might not be the most luck-based game, but it feels like it, and you actually have to pay for it, too, so I definitely wouldn't recommend using this to get frog coins, just in my opinion, so I'll try it uh, one more time, and then I'm done. The second game we have is my favorite game, Blackjack. I don't know why, but when I was younger, I played this all the freaking time. I don't know why, I just found this so much fun. But basically, for those who don't know how to play Blackjack, you get dealt two cards, and based on the number value you have with your two cards, you actually uh, decide whether you want to draw another card or stay at the number you are currently. And your goal is to actually get the highest amount of points, or 21 points, without going over 21. So, uh, generally, generally, if you have a high point total, like 18, 19, or 20, uh, you want to stay. If you have... Any value lower than that, you might want to consider drawing another card. So that's generally how you play. You can fit, you can pick up the rules very, very easily. You can get an idea for how this works. But yeah, you uh, basically pay a frog coin to play, and you actually get a frog coin if you win. And uh, I actually did pretty well here. I actually I uh, didn't lose a single game in what I showed. So yeah, this is a lot of fun to do. So let's see. Got a ten. And my second card is a 10, so that's a perfect number. Maybe not perfect, not as perfect as it could be, but definitely going to stay at 20. Ooh, so close. I actually got close to losing that, but thankfully, even being just one over is not a good thing, so hooray for that. So we're going to keep playing. Uh, play one more game, I think. I think this is the last game I played. Okay, so I have a 10 right now. And uh, definitely want to draw. It'd be stupid to stay here. And obviously going to stay at 20. And he got a very high number. Yep, he got 28. <laughs> Oh, stupid blackjack dealer. But yeah, that's it for blackjack. And the last game we can play, this one actually is uh, free. You can play this as much as you want without having to worry about pain. Uh, this is look the other way. And you want to look in the opposite direction of the direction that great guy points his finger up. So uh, this takes a while and it is luck based because there is no indicator of which way you have to look. But you get a really good prize if you play this a hundred times and win a hundred times. Uh, you get an item called a Star Egg, which is basically a weaker variation of the Rock Candy. Uh, instead of doing 200 damage per enemy, it does 100 an damage per enemy. And uh, that's basically what the Star Egg does. But I'm not going to play this a hundred times. It'd be even more than a hundred times because it's luck based. But yeah, I'm not going to play it that many times just to get this. So I just showed it off a few times. And I'm probably going to end it right there. And until you get to the 100 mark, uh, you get a bunch of weak items like the uh, moldy mushrooms and the wilt shrooms that you got from Knife Guy. So you get a lot of coins from this too if you get all those items. So that's one thing you can do. But um, otherwise, I'm not going to waste all of my time just to get a star egg. I don't think it's a one-use item either. I think you get to use it as much as you want. But anyway, that's actually going to be it for the extra video. I've shown off everything I thought was worth showing off. And uh, in the next video, we're going to go straight to Bowser's Keep. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video of extras if you watched it. 
Again, if you didn't watch it, I completely understand, although you're not hearing this. And uh, I'll see you guys next time when we enter the final leg of this game. Later, folks.